Why is it actually counterproductive to respond to various tones used to behavior, such as kicking in the same way? Prevention is so important. There's only 3-7% to 7 of children who do not respond to preventive techniques. That is amazing. I found that super interesting. There is always going to be some children that will need additional help. However, it's sort of like choosing, picking your battles. You have to understand that kids will be kids. We all know that. Sometimes you just really need to look at, as the video said, look at the big picture. ABCs, like we learned in class. Antecedent behavior consequences. These cannot be the same. Setting events can cause patterns. And you need to take uh, anecdotal notes and take times down at the time when the challenging behavior is occurring and when it's not occurring. Because, at, say, for example, at story time, Sherry could be being a perfect angel and then in blocks she's throwing and kicking and hitting. You know, there's something going on in blocks that needs to be worked on, but there's something in story time that's not triggering her behavior to happen. So, therefore, it is counterproductive, I believe, because the behaviors are not always brought on by the same trigger. This would begin to ch confuse the kid on how to act and react, and plus, some behaviors are dangerous. So I would say in my own classroom one day, I'm a firm believer that the only way I'm going to yell is if something is dangerous. Like if that pre-K VE kid is climbing on that shelf and it's about to fall over. First of all, that shelf shouldn't be there. But second of all, really, that's the only time I think that you, everyone should raise their voice in the classroom. What sources of info do you gather in your classroom that will help lead to individual planning for children? The power of observation and anecdotal notes in different times and different activities will need to be thorough and these are great for parents to help understand what the behaviors that are happening at school and be able to compare and contrast what's happening at home. Other behavior people and admin in the school can also understand. You, you need to document thoroughly. By this I mean you can't just write Maria was mad or um, Jamie's was crying. You have to write the exact scenario that was going on. And we all know what that is. Those sad scenarios. Blah, blah, blah did this in this section at this time after this happened and then did this. You know, something like that is going to help a lot more than Sherry was mad. Um, ways you can do this, documenting, use checklists, uh, really portfolios, anecdotal notes, informal assessments. Some people use those pre-recorded forms. Just really some hard assessments and anecdotal notes and port, uh, are really going to be the thing that helps. Um, the benefits of having long and short-term goals. The long-term goal, having the short-term ones embedded in it, I think is awesome. That makes the children feel that they can accomplish more and feel positive. Um, also, they will work as stepping stones to complete their long-term goal. So as in the video, the child is working, fixing little things towards the long-term goal they're going to meet. So I think it said, oh, you know, he was... He swore out in the class, and everyone thought that was terrible, but for him, that was a big step instead of punching someone, something like that. So fixing little things makes him feel so great when you go over and say, I'm so proud you didn't hit Mary, because, and I'm so glad you used your words, but here's some other words you can use next time. And thank you so much for working on your behavior. Good job, and give him a star, or whatever you do. Also, um, these progress spots along the way um, help to show improvement and make it measurable. What factors should be considered in choosing the most effective strategies for a child? There are six factors when choosing effective strategies for children's individual plans. As in the video, they said define the behavior, collect info on child's use of behavior, make your best guess as to why the child's using their behavior, what are they trying to get, set goals, form in, and implement strategies, and evaluate success and make changes appropriately. So if behaviors, if replacement behaviors are making things worse, change things up. If it's working, keep it going. Um, you might want to differentiate instruction and scaffold the children's use of that skill that they need to work on in order to identify opportunities that the challenging behavior could occur and scaffold that child towards new replacement behaviors. Last question, after a new strategy is applied, if the behavior gets worse, 
um, why does that indicate that the strategy may be working? We just need to be patient. Basically, in case the strategy is applied and it, uh, the behavior gets worse, you just need to stay calm and stay patient. As with all things, this will take time. So, usually it takes, the video said, within two to six weeks. Who knows how long it could be. For each individual child is different. It will take time to learn that those replacement behaviors end up in positive manners, and the child will see that. That waiting in line on the monkey bars is going to get them way further than them just jumping up and trying to, you know, um, push other kids off. It's going to get them farther, and they're actually going to get to play on the monkey bars, and probably the slide, too. Um, one last thing is that you need to stop paying attention to those behaviors that you used to use when the child was reacting in these challenging ways. Just like the child's replacing theirs, you need to replace your way of, of reacting. So the child's going to react, and I've seen it happen in pre-KVE, and they react, and they cry, and they scream, and they want to get your attention or whatever if, they're, if that's their behavior. But you just need to stay calm and ignore it until the replacement behavior is put into place, which it eventually should be. And then you just jump for joy, and you put a butter on, a, on them because they're on a roll, as Dr. Harper would say. Have a great weekend.